I feel great. Knees feel, are good? Yeah, my body feels amazing. What's uh, What has been the difference? Just time? Yeah, I think timing and just be able to, you know, completely focus on my body. You know, just, you know, like I said, you know, not having to go to school now. So every day is just, just work focusing on you. So how, how irritating is Josh Jackson? Man, he gets on my nerves. Like, yeah, we could put both these guys on yeah, at the same time. Yeah, he just gets on my nerves. Yeah. No, that's my brother, though, man. For How, real, what's what's the relationship like here? Now Josh Jackson oh, sitting man. down next to him. Me, uh, <laughs> me and Harry have been knowing each other for so long, probably since, what you think, probably sixth, seventh grade? At least. What'd yeah. you mean? Um, when was the first time we met? USA Basketball, I think. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, that might have been. It might have been before that. Me, and him, and Jason been knowing each other so long. And uh, I've always said that was like one of the craziest things. Just. You know, being at the draft with these guys who I've been knowing for so many years, yeah. it's just real cool. How about can you can you name a class that you took at Kansas? Because Malik <laughs> couldn't name a class that he took at Kentucky. <laughs> Harry could. Can you name a class? I took English one hundred and one yeah. and English one hundred and two. Well, you're very good. You're well spoken, both. so you know. You so finished, far, you finished both. I finished, both. <laughs> I finished every class that I took at the University of Kansas. Same, so far, same, you're same. speaking perfect English, finish. so they did their job. They did definitely, yeah. definitely finished. I mean, Malik said he took stats, and I said, "All right, yeah, points per game, not a." Per game because he didn't get any <laughs> rebound, three, rebound, field goal. Uh, like he was like he did not know what he took at Kentucky. Uh, he, although he does know that he took a pay cut when he came to the NBA. <laughs> that's that's yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. He, 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 oh, he, he, he did. He did. He did know. He did know that. So when you, you guys know are, they don't do that at Duke when you guys are back so in no. in, se- in, in seventh grade, you're playing USA basketball. Yeah. As a seventh grader, did you appreciate probably eighth grade? Eighth, eighth grade or even high school? Probably freshman year high school. Okay. Did you did you appreciate that? Scale, like, right. oh yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see all Coming the players. In, yeah, we were probably, we were probably the best players there. But even then, you know, we didn't really feel like that. Right. We were all nervous that we were gonna get cut from the team every year. Even, <laughs> like, even, every even year. on U nineteen. Yeah. Even way. when we got 18, 19 year olds old, we we still felt like we could have got cut. So, it was just still really fun and humbling to be there because there was just so much talent around. Exactly. It's just a high scale of basketball, you know, just a prestigious part of it. Just having so many different players come through the program and then you know, my coach was the right. The, you yeah. know, the high, for the, yeah, yeah, right, right for the you know the, the national team. So, so he started he started recruiting you when you were in. Yeah, uh, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what great, yeah. yeah, but you know that's still a great thing to be a part of. I think you know I think even if you don't make the team, I think you still learn a lot yeah. and you still get better just being there those three four days. So yeah. Uh, now, how about uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your, your life off the court now. Right. Uh, are we living with anybody when we, we go out to Phoenix? Have we found the place yet? Uh, yes, we have found a place. Um, we haven't found furniture yet, though. No furniture. <laughs> so you're not moved in. How about you, Eric? Uh, not yet. I'm, I'm moving into Sacramento uh, next Saturday, so I'll go out there and look for a spot soon. So no house right Is now. Is anybody coming out with you guys to, to help you with the transition? You guys going to be living My by yourself? My aunt is going to help me with your the transition. Your aunt's going to live My mom, she's going to come out there early just help me out. Do you have any idea what it – well, I mean, you're at Oak Hill. Right, so a little bit of doing life, you know. Right, a little bit what it's like, to be, on, like to be on your own. But that's right. – That's different out there. That's, that's different. like living in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, like that's you're not different. Seeing, you're not seeing, that's you're one not of a calm anybody. place right there. What, 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 what was that like going from Oak Hill, not <laughs> right. seeing anybody ever, right. than, than just being on a college campus? Right, it was crazy. Uh, you know, I got hurt during the year at Oak Hill, so I was there for about four months. So you're not, not seeing anybody, you know, seeing the same people every day and it's not as many people and they being mm-hmm. in the same area because it's smaller but you know something that you kind of grew closer together going to different bomb but then going back to Duke it wasn't like I went to Carolina like Kentucky they had like you know 20,000 probably more students than that right, us right. we don't have that many students so for me it was kind of like a, a similar environment but with more people so I was used to being around different kind of people too because you know I would always go to high school there and Josh at Kansas did you live in that I remember like a few years ago seeing a, a picture of like a new basketball house at Kansas, yep. like had a had a hoop in there, and it was just it was just for basketball players. I think. Did you live in that house? Yeah, we all did. The, the whole team lives in that one house. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> what do you What are you guys gonna miss most about college? I mean, I miss it every day. I wish I could go back. Yeah. I, you know, I'm uh, having a miserable time right now. I different think, kind of, yeah, different kind of freedom. I think. I mean, now it's bills. I mean, you know, luckily we were fortunate enough to get paid to pay the bills, but still, it's different back then. You know. That and then you know just being a college student, you know just being just being young, you know just having fun, being around your friends, and just you know going. I ain't gonna say going to class is the best thing in the world, but at the same time, <laughs> I mean, you, you, know, took, you took movies and history of hip hop, okay? Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it just, wasn't you know, like you're taking English one on one. Right. It's just different things. You know, it's kind of hard to like explain, but at the same time, you know, if you're you know if you're in college and you see how it is now, you kind of see just the differences. And then you know, we still have a long way to go too. So yeah, it's different responsibilities. What did you right, learn most right. about? being in college, growing up, preparing to be an adult? 
Um, the biggest thing I learned in college, uh, well, two of the biggest things. One was that, you know, you just got to be really responsible and uh, just take care of business, do everything you got to do. And, you know, most times people won't have anything to say to you. Right. Um, other thing I learned that, um, you know, life is really about relationships and, uh, you know, how other people feel about you. And because um, you never know when somebody else is going to be in a position to help you or when you're going to need help. And um, just having a good relationship with everybody and the people that you meet can really take you a long way. I agree. I think as far as just living aspect first, you know, just being on your own, be able to just, you know, you can go in and out whenever you want to. But at the same time, you got to be able to, you know, manage that and be smart with it. And while trying to, you know, play basketball at the same time, because that's the main goal, and that's why you're there. And like he said, just knowing people and stuff like that, because like somebody from Duke that's working, you know, working this little thing right now. Well, the whole the whole league went to Duke. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm saying, though. But I'm Adam saying Silver. somebody that was at the school with me is here working it right oh, now. Yeah? So that's what I'm saying. Like you never, like he said, well, you never know who you'll see. It's crazy because I just saw somebody that I went to school with working this uh, huh. transition. How about you, Josh, you played the saxophone. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. How, how good are you? You got an album coming out? Can you do that like, in your spare time? Let me get a beat, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no album coming. No album coming right now. When did you, you, you start playing that? Unless um, I want to what? Fund it? <laughs> yeah, unless you want to fund it. <laughs> but uh, I started playing about sixth grade. Um, I was in a band, and uh, I was kind of forced into it. I didn't really want to take it. Yeah. But uh, something really Who funny. Who forced you into it? My mom did. Yeah, yeah she just wanted Smart. me to learn how to play an instrument, and uh, I ended up picking a saxophone. Um, something really funny, though. When I was in middle school, I used to also play for our school team, and our band would perform at halftime of our home games. Don't tell yeah. me you came out of halftime. So, <laughs> so I would get done playing first half on the basketball court, and like our band Stop would be in it. uniforms. I'd still be in my game jersey, and I'd have to just go grab my saxophone and like perform with the band at halftime. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wow. So you'd, you'd sit on the court, or was it like a pep band, and you're, you're trying to like pump up the crowd at halftime? No, we would just go out and you know play a few songs at halftime. We would stand there. Uh, it was kind of, for a middle school, it was actually a really good band. Um, so and, leading, and you were the best player the on the team. Scorer, I was Andrew the best the... saxophone player. I was first chair. First chair saxophone, and you're the best player on the basketball team. Yep. Right. Okay. And then you're coming out at halftime, so you never heard a halftime speech. I rolled the bench. Never through middle school. Yeah. Never. You heard never, of never heard a half. Wow. That's that's never. awesome. Never. Multi talented. <laughs> yeah. It's middle school time. Yeah. You got any type of uh, additional abilities? Uh, not, not, Just uh, basketball. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and watching old movies and critiquing them. Yep. yep you still yep. growing at all? I feel like I feel like I've grown since I left college. Really? Yeah. No, I'm talking about like height wise. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you thought I was talking about maturity. Yeah. So, <laughs> how, how, here, here how tall are you now? Uh, six ten and a half. And you're still growing? I don't know. It might be. I feel like. I remember. I remember. Ta- I remember talking smaller. to your mom a few years ago, and she said that. Uh, and I asked her about you and your height, and, and she said. It's like we go to the doctor and no. every single and, and the chart is just like this. He's actually he was he's always been off the chart and they just don't know to add on another chart or another chart. It right. just keeps going yeah, up. Yeah, it was going up, <laughs> especially at that time. Man, jeez. All right, so the other day Jordan said Kobe over LeBron because right. five over three. Right, right, right. Did you grow up a Jordan guy, a Kobe guy, or a LeBron guy? Uh, more like Jordan, LeBron. That makes sense, you know, because. We weren't really, you know, Old we were, oh, yeah, the, you know, you know what I'm saying. But everybody likes Jordan. So I feel like that's more like a bias thing because everybody mm-hmm. likes yeah. Jordan. But I like, I was growing up, you know, I always had respect for Kobe too. I don't ever, you know, say he's not good and like that. Sure. But I always was the guy that liked LeBron. So what do you make of five over three as Jordan? Right, uh, it makes sense. Uh, I get it. I mean, I still feel like game goes into it, but at the same time, I mean, the ultimate goal is to win a championship, and I feel like winning should always get credit. So, I, you know, I, it's hard not to agree with him on that, but at the same time, I feel like LeBron is a great player, so I feel like, uh, like you know, yeah. maybe see how the rest of LeBron's career goes before you can say yeah, who's Mar- better. Markel's the only one that flat out came out and said that, that LeBron is uh, is not as good as Kobe yet, and he's still got a, a lot of work to do. How about yourself? Right. How do you see that? Um, I think uh, they both do different things. I right. think offensively, Kobe was way more skilled than LeBron was right. and uh, talented as far as like scoring and offensively. But as far as like overall game and affecting a game, I think LeBron exactly. is better because, you know, at the end of the night, when you look at his stats, dude 
sometimes almost has a quadruple double every I night. Mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's every night. I don't, I don't really know too many other players who you know impact the game in that many ways. Now, as a young player, would you want to play with him? Because you get Kyrie <laughs> Irving, who apparently does not. Right, right. How would well, you as a young player, him? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, just especially a guy like myself who um, you know plays a similar position, does a few similar things. Uh, it'll be a great person to learn from. How so. about as you got older, would you still want to play with him? I think so. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, so he's a guy who wins, and um, you know that's what I'm all about. Exactly. All right, so so you're buying a place in Phoenix. Are you renting in Cleveland? <laughs> you're gonna, because, because your name your nah. name comes up a lot. <laughs> I think if that was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Okay. So I, I mean, so, yeah, it, so how did you handle that immediately when you hear the when you hear the Kyrie stuff, and then you hear Phoenix, mm-hmm. and then you hear your name out there that well, Cleveland wants you, but Phoenix isn't going to do the deal if you're involved. Mm-hmm. Are you constantly talking to your agent? Are you? Constantly checking social I mean, media. Yeah, How are you handling it? A little bit talking to my agent. Not really checking social media because you know yeah, it's not the people, way to go. <laughs> no, that's not the way to go. Yeah, I mean people just go you know, say you whatever. You learned that in college. Good. Yeah. Good. But um, I, I handled it the same way. You know, I tried to handle draft night. You know, coming in, I didn't really know what was gonna happen. I still don't know what's gonna happen. But um, you know, I'm gonna make the best of whatever situation that I'm presented with. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm traded to China, whatever. Right. You know, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna be happy and. You know, just try to make the best of it. The the, uh, the sons keep you in the loop on what was going on and say, listen, do you don't believe the rumors or were you in the dark? Uh, I was kind of in the dark a little bit, but, um, you know, I got a feeling that, you know, it, the trade really wasn't going to happen. So no one from the sons, though, said to you, hey, this isn't this isn't going to happen. Uh, those words were never yeah, said. That's funny. Know. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Just thinking about how it works in the organization. I, I do have I have draft questions for both of you. Draft question for you, Josh. How did you skirt the Celtics workout? Because your your GM your GM said like yeah we did some we did some things but not out of the you know it's not like we did anything illegal or anything. How did that How did that work? It was actually just a lot of miscommunication between me and my agent, um, who had scheduled the workout, right? And I didn't know about it. I had no idea of the workout until you know that morning when it was supposed to happen. And I said, you know what? I'm not ready. So, no, we're not working out today. Did it did it bother you that Ainge came out and publicly criticized um, you canceling it while he was mid-flight? I mean, it was definitely an inconvenience. I'd be mad if, you know, I was halfway across the country and, yeah. you know, somebody canceled on me. But, uh, you know, it happened. <laughs> and then, and the, and then Danny insulted Sacramento because he was like, and that's where and that's where you're gonna be. He's like, oh, and then, now I got to spend the day in Sacramento, and I got I got nothing I got nothing to do. Then he trashed he trashed right, your right, city. Right, tell him California. Man. <laughs> All right, fellas, we we appreciate you sitting down here for a couple. Thank of you, minutes, you. I appreciate yeah, it. Good yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you, Josh. Yes, sir. Harry and uh, Harry and Josh sitting down together, so you get the uh, the combination there for both those guys.